Hello and welcome to Meeps Math Matters. I'm going to be talking about the pigeonhole principle today. Pigeonhole principle is very straightforward. Let me give it in concrete terms. Suppose you have five pigeons. There's my lovely artistic effort here. Five pigeons and you need to put them in four pigeonholes. There is no rule about how they need to be distributed among the pigeonholes other than that each pigeon has to be in a hole. Well, the pigeonhole principle says no matter how you do it, at least one hole will contain two pigeons. Very elementary. Okay? Of course, it's possible they're all in the same hole, but the point is you were forced to have at least one hole have two pigeons in it. Now, you may be thinking, what does this have to do with math? Who cares? I'm going to show you a couple of applications, some not really serious math, one more of a serious math question, to show you how the pigeonhole principle, as basic as it is, is used in a wide variety of situations. The first application of the pigeonhole principle I'm going to look at I call sock drawer in the dark. And you may have heard of this kind of question before. And the way it's set up is this. You, for whatever reason, you're in the college dorm and sharing a room and you can't wake up your roomie. You have a sock drawer that is filled with a whole bunch of different socks of different colors. Okay, and the first one I'll do uh, purple and white, usually black and white. Purple and white socks. And when you pull out socks, you know how many socks you've pulled out, but you can't see their color. And all you want to do is pull out the minimum number of socks to guarantee a matching pair. Okay, obviously if you take all the socks out of the drawer, you'll have all the matching pairs. But you want the minimum number of socks to guarantee a matching pair. So let's just think this through without using the pigeonhole principle. Obviously, if you pick one sock, not going to work, not even a pair. Two socks. Well, it could be one of each color. Okay, again, not a matching pair. But if it's three socks, okay, again, there's only two colors of socks in the drawer, only two types of sock in the drawer. Well, you could have one of the purple, one of the white, and then you have one left over and it has to be either purple or, purple or white. So you will get one more, a matching pair. So let us think of this in terms of the pigeonhole principle. In terms of the pigeonhole principle, the pigeons are equivalent to the socks, the individual socks you're pulling out, and the pigeonholes are the colors. So let me generalize this. To generalize this, if you have in pigeonholes or in colors of socks, if you pick out n plus one pigeons or n plus one socks, you will get at least one matching pair. So that's the pigeonhole principle. You can do it even more generalized form, say you need two matching pairs or four socks of all the same color. I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, I will do a generalized form of the pigeonhole principle perhaps at a later time because it is used all over math. Let me give you some specific questions to work on. I'm not going to give you the answers. It's for you to find out. How many, so in the two color example, so you have two colors, how many to get two pairs? And they can be two white and two purple, uh, two, per, uh, two pairs of purple, two pairs of white, I don't care. It's two pairs, any color pairs, or two pairs of the same color. So the second one I'm asking 
And the answer is different, that I want four purple socks or four white socks. So how many do I have to take out? So that's the first one. The second one, do the same with three colors of socks. Four colors. You can see this, it gets complicated really quickly. Um, there are generalized forms of the pigeonhole principle. I want you to try to work this out for yourself. If you don't like homework, let me move on to something else. This is getting a little hairy. Speaking of hair, like that segue, here is a statement you can break out at your next pizza party to impress people with your esoteric knowledge. At least two people in the U.S., actually it's quite a bit more, but at least two people in the U.S. have the exact same number of hairs. If you're going to be a smart aleck, you may say, well, duh, of course, bald people, no hairs. I'm not talking about that. I am talking about total number of hairs on the body. Now, obviously the minimum number of hairs you can have is zero. I really don't think there's anybody who has zero hairs, even people who have done a lot of waxing and whatnot have nose hairs or ear hairs or hairs you can't see. So, but theoretically the minimum is zero. How are you going to figure out what the maximum number of hairs is? I'm looking at this little picture of a guy over here. I, want to, I just need an upper bound. For this problem, I just need an upper bound for what it could be. So I am going to upper bound this with a rectangular prism guy. Okay. Here he is. He's happy. And here's his feet and his arms and whatnot. Okay. What are the dimensions I'm going to have on this guy? I'm going to let him be six foot, six inches tall. And then we've got, um, oops, two feet here, and I'll do two feet here. This is a big guy. Okay, just get rid of that six. I'm going to have to let you check my math. I get 8,640 square inches for this surface area of my rectangular guy. And let's say our maximum hair density, okay, again, I just need an upper bound. I'll say 1,000 hairs per square inch. That's a lot, okay? I don't think anyone has 1,000 squares per he uh, square inch, maybe on your head, but that's the only place it could be. That, I really doubt that's true. Um, so if you multiply these together, you end up with, 8,640,000 as the maximum number of hairs on a person's body. You can check these numbers out for yourself. You're still going to be in the ballpark. Well, how many people are in America? About 300 million. So, our pigeons are people. Our pigeonholes are the number of hairs. Well, we've only got 8.6 million pigeonholes to stick 300 million pigeons in. So at least two people in the U.S. have the exact same number of hairs. And if you really want to bore people, then you can try to figure out what is the largest number of people you could say definitely have the exact same number of hairs. Try that out, just like with the generalization of the socks. So look, you know, you can uh, come up with weird trivia as a result of the pigeonhole principle. For the last problem, I'm not going to answer it. I'm going to tell you what you need to prove. You thought I wasn't going to give you homework? Ha! I lied. Here's an equilateral triangle. It has side two. And here's the statement. If you put five points in this triangle, at least two of the points will be less than or equal to distance one apart. Okay, so that is your assignment. I will show how this is done in a later episode. Just in case you don't want to do the homework or you want it checked. As always, you can contact me at marypat.campbell at gmail.com. And as always, spread the math love. And do your homework.